I want to take a slightly different approach and something I'm calling the Internet of Meaning. And as we go through this, I'll explain why. I'm sure you're all aware we're in the middle of a powerful digital revolution that you're all engaged in to a greater or lesser extent. And my role at Telefonica 02 is actually to help to create a digital future for our customers using some of the amazing trends and technologies that are available. But when you think about it as an industry, and I'm involved in this, so I'm, I'm guilty as anything, we use some very odd terms and strange descriptions to describe what we're trying to do. So we talk about things like the Internet of Things. We talk about big data. I work for a, a part of the business that's called Machine to Machine. There's even been marketing campaigns that some of you may have seen that talk about the rise of the machine. It's clearly kind of oblivious to the story behind the Terminator franchise. So it's any wonder why people struggle to kind of engage and get any degree of empathy with these kind of changes. So what I suggest to you is, let's look at this in a different way. In life, we're searching for meaning and value. So if we approach it from a customer perspective approach, if we think about it about me and about you and look at what's going on in the world, we can apply a very, very different lens. And we start to think about, therefore, not about big data, but big value. And we start to think about not the Internet of Things, but the Internet of Meaning and how it relates to us and how it can deliver powerful benefits for us. Now, there's some amazing kind of stats up there that I'm sure you've all seen before to a greater or lesser extent. In simple terms, in 2008 was the year there was more connected objects, things, if you like, to use a dreaded term, than there are people on the planet. And since then, it's been doing the normal hockey stick. So the numbers have been increasing and growing at a really exponential rate. So as more and more objects become connected, more and more people become connected, naturally we produce more and more data, and that's where the concept of big data has come around. So to use one of the, one of the questions is kind of, so what? You know, what does it matter? You know, is size actually important? And the answer is generally, well, yes, to an extent. However, if you apply our customer lens to it and look at it from our point of view and your point of view, you can look at the numbers in a very, very different way that really kind of stir my imagination and get me excited about some of the trends that are going on. So the stats there, if you think about, just for me, the number of seconds in a year, I have, give or take, 31 and a half million. And every second of that year, I can create data or I can receive data. I can create information or receive information. And that's quite impressive. But then you consider there's actually 7 billion people on the planet. So you've got 31 and a half million times 7 billion, which is, that's kind of a lot. And every opportunity, therefore, is for people to be able to engage with the ecosystem and create and receive meaning and value. Which is why it's interesting to think that, therefore, every second really does count. So what would it take to create this Internet of Meaning? And briefly, I'm going to kind of look at four elements and four key drivers that I believe produce the meaning and the value that is essential to us. So first of all, let's think about simplicity. Now, simplicity is a catalyst, in essence, for, for adoption and enjoyment. By delivering really powerful really easy, super simple interfaces, so the iPhone's a great example of this, people engage and start to share information. And therefore, you build up this virtuous circle where people start to integrate into the community. And you start to get different experiences. You get person-to-person -person exchange, you get person-to-machine exchange, and machine-to-machine -machine exchange. So it's all about information coming in in a really, really simple way and helping to... To, uh, to develop that internet of meaning. But crucially, you need to put the customer in control. 
Because I'm not going to engage in this unless I feel I'm in control. So I'm getting a lot of information coming into me. And the trick is not have information overload. Actually, if you've got that, you've got filter failure. So what we start to look at here is how can we present this to customers in a really super simple and powerful way they can engage in. So if you think about how would you engage with this world, you're thinking more about something like Facebook, if you like, where you can see what's going on with your friends, you can see what they're doing, where they're, where they're engaged, what's happening, and how you might choose to, to engage in some of that. It really puts you in control of your life and the information that's coming in. And I'm sure you've all seen Nest, but Nest is kind of a great example of this. You know, Nest is, is, is a bit like um, a supermodel in the tech world, in, in a sense. Um, you know, it's really simple in terms of its idea and execution. It's just amazing. Um, it's really bright and intelligent. After all, it's a learning thermostat. And it looks, it looks kind of, maybe I'm sad, but it looks kind of sexy and cool. So simplicity to get people to engage is absolutely clear, clear and necessary. And I think Nest have really nailed that. Let's look at the second point, which is around utility. Now, for utility to be a real powerful catalyst for our lives, it needs to affect a number of elements how I work, what does it mean in terms of how I play, how I learn, how I grow as a person, how does it enrich my life, how does it build and deepen different relationships, how does it enable me to make most of my time on this planet. And Fitbit's kind of an interesting example here. So Fitbit works, it's got a number of elements to it that ultimately is all around your lifestyle. It looks at how much you eat, it looks at how much you weigh, it looks at um, some of your activities. It even looks at how you sleep. But it's inf information that then delivers a purpose. So meaning and value is added, and that's why you choose to engage with this type of technology, because it's delivering something back to you. Think about it from a work perspective, and what can it mean? So from a business perspective, it can radically change the way in which my business works. It can deliver new opportunities to me, it can help me to reduce costs. It can help me to change the way I think. It can lead to employee happiness and increasing that, which is really, really important. Because it's not all about the bottom line, although delivering to the shareholder is important. From a society point of view, we get more empowerment, more freedom, more enfranchisement. And the flip side is, it changes our relationships with governments. So governments need to be more transparent and open. They need to be more collaborative and working for us and more accountable to us. So you start to see subtle but important changes in terms of the balance of power and the way our economy works. It even presents an opportunity to address market failures. The third point is around serendipity. Now, when you kind of think about big data, it's, you know, it's huge, it's scary. It's intellectually kind of challenging to get your head around it. But when simplicity and utility collide, you get something that's really powerful because it's turning data into information and therefore adding value. And it's adding value to me at an individual level in a smart and intelligent way. And often serendipity is, is you know, Random acts of kindness, unique moments of truth, if you like. It's when there's that happy coincidence where the systems and the sensors suddenly come together, but in a very personal basis for me, and deliver me something that I really wanted, or perhaps I didn't know I wanted at the time, but when it comes through, I get that wow factor. So it's really personal, and it's all ultimately about sharing. The final point is around accessibility. And this is, a, this is a bit around crowdsourcing, if you like. And really, the hypothesis is the greater the crowd and the greater the engagement, the greater the perceived wisdom. So to deliver a powerful internet of meaning and add that value, we need people to really engage, to build the network in a really sustainable manner so that it grows. And it's a, it's a learning environment that reflects everybody's um, inputs over time. And to do that, people need to engage. So they need 
um, devices and the ability to interact in an affordable manner. So it could be free or it could be just low cost. And we see that progressive train happening. And ultimately, that starts to rebalance some of the scales, if you like, around how our society works. So we get the, the rise of these win-win-win business models, which says the balance of power is proportional both to me and to a large business and to government or stakeholders in society. So it brings more equality and more freedom. But to do that, you can't have any of these things. Because to engage, you can't have restrictions. You don't want controls. It needs to be open. People need to be able to contribute and to filter themselves or have tools that filter it. You can't have information and data in silos because it's, it's the power of the collective that generates the meaning of value. And there's quite a cool example here. So this is actually three companies I've just, just put together to give an example. Um, so you've got Smart Things, Ninja Blocks, and a company called If This Then That. Now these are kind of small startup companies. You know, I have no relationship with them whatsoever. Um, and effectively what they enable is using really cheap technology in a really smart way on an open platform. So you can put their types of sensors in your home and build a smart home in essence, which is quite cool and it's really, really cheap. You can then put the information on their platform. But the real kicker, if you like, is what can you do with that information? And if you start to use decision engines like if, there, if this, then that, and there's others there, you start to build rules that says, based on this activity or this piece of information, then I would like you to do that. So if somebody rings my front doorbell, take a photograph and send me an SMS of who it is, for example. The point being, that's relative to me. To me, you may take that information and drive a different outcome depending upon what you wanted. The world is changing really, really dramatically, and the numbers are huge, and people are engaging more. What I'm suggesting is to change the lens by which you view some of these changes. To think about what does it mean for me and what does it mean for you. Ultimately, it's about enriching people's lives. You're my life. And if we deliver those benefits, then we're doing something really powerful and really changing. And that's ultimately why I choose, and it is a choice, to look at things in a different way. So I choose not to think about big data, but to think about the value behind the big data. And I choose not to think about the internet of things, but the internet of meaning and what it means to me. Thank you very much.